Hello, I would like to welcome you to lecture 21 of 3NO3. We'll discuss in this lecture uh, simplification of logic functions, sum of products, uh, Carano maps, and uh, examples. Um, I would like to mention that in this part we are discussing combinational logic functions. And in these logic functions, uh, the value of the logic function depend, depends only on the, on the values of the logical variables at the input. It does not depend on any best history. So there is no memory for these, uh, for these circuits, and that's why we call them combinational logic functions. Later, I will, this, I will show you some examples of sequential logic functions that require some sort of memory. But for this one, these are simply the output of these logic functions depend on the current value of the input. One of the very important things when we, when we implement a certain logic function is to try to simplify it as much as we can. Sometimes we can have uh, a logic function with many variables uh, and very complicated expression. If we try to do a brute force implementation, it will require many gates. So we have first to do some simplification of, lo of these logic functions. And there are some um, softwares that does this before you implement it using a B implement a certain logic function using a BLA or so, it's using some other means. Uh, but, but here for this course, we, we have to apply uh, rules of Boolean algebra. Uh, we have discussed many of these so far uh, to try to simplify expressions. This would be our first means to simplify any expression. And there's an example of that I'm showing you here, a logical expression, uh, f is equal to abc plus a, a, a bar c, ab bar c plus abc bar. Um, and um, of course, if we try to implement this one, we'll require brute force, we we'll require three input and gate, another three input and gate, another three input and gate, and then we'll have all these ORD um, through a three, a three input OR gate. Uh, but well, we can we can try to simplify this expression. We have ABC here. We can add another ABC. Uh, of course, this will not change the logical expression because, as we know from uh, from Boolean algebra, x plus x is equal to x. So adding the same logical expression to itself will not change the value of that logical expression. So this is why, if this is true, adding another true, the or will be true. If this is false, adding another false. The result will be false, so it does not really make any difference. So this is why we added this ABC here, and then we'll uh, we'll combine ABC plus AB bar C here, and then ABC plus ABC bar, um, and then we we'll try to take some common terms out from this one. I can take AC out. We end up with B plus B bar. From this one, I can try to take AB out. I end up with C plus C bar. Any logic variables or do with its complement or its inverse will give us simply one. So we can simply say that C plus C bar is always equal to 1. So, um, so this one here will result in 1, this will result in 1, and any, any, uh, any variable uh, and, it, and it was 1 will give me the same variable. So AC and 1 will give me AC, AB and 1 will give me AB. So this now, this simplified this expression a lot. Now we have only two, two input gates can be used. And this logic function can be implemented in the regular way. So I can I can simply say this is um, an AND gate here. I have AC for the first one. I have another AND gate here, and the inputs are AB. And then when I all these ones together, uh, I end up I end up with my uh, total function here, which is AC and uh, AC or uh, AB. So this was simplification using um, rules of Boolean algebra, and sometimes this is possible, we can do that. Uh, sometimes the expression is a bit more complicated to be able to, to see which terms should be summed to one another, and there has to be some other means of doing it. Let's take a look at one more example here. We have a logic function x, y bar, z, f is equal to x, y bar, z plus x bar, y bar, z plus x, y, z. Would like first to uh, to put the truth table of this uh, of this um, of this variable here or this function here. Would like to put its truth table. Would like to show an implementation all using only two input gates. I have here three variables, so I have to do an implementation using uh, two input gates. I have to try to simplify this expression, and then I have to Im do an implementation of the simplified function. Uh, so for this one, I could see I will get an output from here. If x is true, y is false, and z tr is true, 
or when x is false, y is false, and z is true, or when x is true, y is true, and z is true. So the logic table of this of this function will will have only three ones, and the, all the remaining inputs will be zeros. All the all the remaining outputs, uh, corresponding to all other input combinations, will be zeros. Remember here we have three variables, so there are eight poss possible inputs, and uh, only for for three of these eight cases we we'll get one at the output, and for the others the output will be logic zero or low. So we can try to implement, of course, a, bro a brute force implementation for this function, and then we can try to simplify it as well. Let's see how we can do that. First is the truth table of this function. As you can see, um, when you have x bar, y bar, z, you get 1. When you have x, y bar, z, you get 1. And when you have x, y, for the last term, you have x, y, and z, you get 1. These are the three terms. These are the terms that create one. For all the other uh, values of the of these logic variables or other combinations, will give us logic zero at the out at this at the output of this um, logical expression. Of course, we can try to implement it. Just remember, uh, for this example, we are asking for an implementation using only two input logic gates, while we have three variables. So there must be a, a way around that. One way of using two input logic gates is to remember that x and y and z is simply x and y and then you take the output from x and y you end it with z. So by doing that I, 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 I converted a three input AND gate to two two input AND gates. Also if I have x or y or z I can replace it by x or y or with z. So, a 3 input OR gate can be replaced by 2 2 input OR gates. And this is what I'm going to be using here. I have the expression for this function. Uh, it, had, it had 3 terms. Each term is the, is the ending of 3 logical variables. I will convert this ending of 3 logical variables into these 2 level endings. So, instead of using 1, one AND gate, I will use um, 2 AND gates. And the same thing for the oring. I ha I would I would like to or three expressions. I'm gonna be oring two of them, and then I will or the the result with a third variable. So now this is this is a brute force implementation of this logic expression. The, the output here is x y bar z. The output here is x bar y bar z. The output here is x y z. Okay. Now, I, well, of course, I, this, is, this, is, this is equivalent to a 3 input AND gate. This is equivalent to another 3 input AND gate. This is equivalent to another 3 input AND gate. Now, I have to OR the 3 results. And in doing that, I will simply, I will use a cascade of 2 OR gates as shown here. I will OR first the 2 results. And then what's coming out from here, I will OR it with the third value here. Okay, so this is a brute force implementation of this expression. No simplification. We required how many gates? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I required eight gates to be able to implement this one. Now let's try to do some simplification using Boolean algebra and then try to implement that expression again. Okay, the expression that we had is x uh, summing uh, x, x, y bar z or x bar y bar z or x y z what I, what I did here I added another x z y bar which is really equivalent to this one so I added one more term which is identical to this one and as we said x or x is still equal to x so I did not really change anything here uh, I will combine this one and this new term here and I will combine this one with this term here Okay, I'm trying just to take some common terms out. From this one here, I can take exit out, and I will leave y or y bar. From this one, I can take z y bar out, and I will leave x or x bar. We agreed that any variable, when it's or with its negation or its inverse, our, um, we get 1. Because if this is false, this is true. If this is true, this is false. Then the oring will always give us 1. So this will result in x, z, and 1 
uh, or z y bar and one any variable when it is ended with one will give us the same variable so this will give us z y bar here this will give us x z now we can simplify this further we can we can leave it of course as it is uh, or we can take z out um, this one here will give us um, one and gate and then one another one and the gate and then the result of these two we or them this one will give us first using an or gate and then the result of the or gate we end it with z so these are two possible implementation this is and followed by or this one here will give us or followed by end So for the one that I mentioned earlier, you can see this is x, y bar, this x, x plus x or y bar, this will give us this one here, and then we end this one with z. This one will require only two gates, while if I, if I try to use the, uh, the, um, the other one, which is uh, f equal to x, z plus z, y bar, I will end up with more, with more gates. I will end up with needing, of course, to uh, have one more AND gate. Okay, so there are two ways of implementing this. Of course, I did not count here the cost of implementing an inverter because Y bar will have to be inverted as well because this is, should be Y and then you invert it through a logical inverter. But still, this implementation as an OR followed by an AND will require fewer gates than this one here. Okay, I thought of also showing you another implementation of this function as all NAND gates. This is f equal to x, z, or y bar z. But using De Morgan's laws, I can write this one as the bar of x, z bar and a bar, a bar of y bar z. In other words, this, this is or, and or can be converted into NAND. These are in and why? Because I'm doing an ending of this term plus an ending of this term and then I negate the output. So this, this one here is an AND gate. And each one of these individual terms is also an AND gate because this is the inversion of XZ which is an AND and this inversion is YZ bar which is an AND. So using De Morgan's law I was able to convert this expression which is really called the sum of product. Sum of products because I have uh, I'm I'm oring and it and it expression. I'm converting it to uh, two level nands using the Morgan's law. And of course, if I implement this one, this one here is the first nand. The input is x z. The output is is the bar of x z. The input here is z y bar. The output here is a bar is a bar of y bar z. Now I I pass this one through the last end, and so it gives us the first term. And it was the second term was with a negation. So this will be the last NAND implementation. So this is also, it's also a possibility to implement these circuits using um, all NAND uh, implementations. And sometimes I can do it using all NOR implementations. So as we explain, as the last exp uh, example explained, uh, usually we try to simplify uh, our logical expressions into the fewer number of sum of products, and this fewer number of sum of products can be implemented using inverters, AND gates, and OR gates. This function I'm showing one more example, which is um, f equal x bar, y bar, z bar, plus x, y bar, z. This will work fine, of course, if the number of terms is small. You can simplify the logic very easily. There is no problem with that. Sometimes this is not the case, as I will show you in a second. So the last expression I'm showing in the previous slide has been implemented here as a sum of product. So you can see AND, AND gates followed by an OR gate. This is called sum of product implementation. Of course, any logic variable that needs in uh, inversion, we do invert it. So this one, the output from here is X bar, Y, Z bar. The output from here is X, Y bar, Z. And then when you sum this, you, when you, you do an ORing of all this, you get x bar y z bar or x y x y bar z here at the output which is really the the, the expression of like to simplify now if the expression is very complex we have to find another tool and i will show in the next slide a technique that can work fine for up maybe to six variables 
and beyond that there are softwares and algorithms that that uh, that we we have to use cannot be done by hand very easily but the, the technique i'm going to explain to you will will do the simplification for uh, functions of up to six variables Okay, there are maps we can build called Crano maps. Crano maps can be built from the truth table. So you, 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 have, you have your logic function, you know the truth table of this function, how the function, the value of the function is either logic one or logic zero for different combinations of, of the input logical variables. We, we drive the Crano map from, uh, from, from uh, the truth table by combining the variables into groups of one, two, or four. And then we allow only one logic variable to change from one column to another or from one row to another. So we build a table uh, and then, we, as we said, we combine the variables into groups of one, two, or four. And then we, we allow for going from one column to another or one row to another, only one variable to change. And then we try to, to, uh, to inspect this map to, to create more, more compact logical expressions we do something called grouping we try to group the ones together so let's take a look at that how this works for, with an example okay we have here a logic function it's given by this table i have uh, f it's some logic function of x y and z i may not even know the expression but for this one's f equal to x z um uh, actually actually for this one I, I assume that i will not do the expression for now i assume we don't know it so uh, f is zero everywhere except when y and z are 1, when x and z are 1, and uh, we have also a couple of more here. Uh, when all of them are 1, you get 1, and uh, when x, y are 1, are 1, you get 1. Okay, so what we do, we create this Crano map. You can see in this Crano map, I, I, I combined, I, I, I put y, z together, and then this column will give me the value 0, 0, when y, z are 0, 0, when y, z are 0, 1. The next item here will not be one zero because in the Crano map when you go from one column to another you must allow only one variable to change so I'm going from here to here I will change only the first variable which is y and then going from here we, to here to here I will allow only the second variable to change which is z this y in the columns of the Crano maps will allow it to count as zero 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 one 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 and one zero this is only a single variable so we're allowed to count, count as zero one now we put in every entry of this of this table the corresponding variables. For example, we have here 0, 0, 0, 0. We put 0 here. We had uh, when y and z are both 1s and x equal to 0. So for this one here, for example, <clears throat> y, z are equal to 1 and x equal to 0. You get 1. So we write 1 here. So you, you convert this truth table, which has um, 4 columns and uh, 8 truths, you convert it to only eight, eight cells. Eight cells. Convert it into a table with four, uh, two rows by four columns. And in going from one row to another, only one variable change. You can see x change from zero to one. In going from here to here, only y z changes. For, uh, z will change from zero to one. In going from here to here, only y will change. In going from here to here, only z will change. Now you can see, if you do that, if you map all these variables to this table, you will see that you have these numbers, 1, 1, 1, 1. We start to lump these expressions together. We lump them so that we try to extract the, the dependencies. For example here, we have when x is equal to 1, when y, z was 0, 1, you got 1. When y, z was 1, 1, you got 1. So it's obvious here when x is 1 and z is 1, the result is 1 regardless of y. So this term here will give me the expression that uh, this one here is equal to xz, regardless of y. Let's take a look at these two. Here x was equal to 0 and yz was 1, 1. Here x is equal to 1 and yz is 1, 1. So you can see when yz is 1 and 1, the output is 1 regardless of x. So this, this term here or this grouping will give me an output which is yz. Let's take a look at this third one here. In this third one, x is equal to 1. And here y is 1 and here y is 1. Here y is z is 1 and z is 0. So here you can see when x is 1 and y is 1, the output is 1 regardless of z. So this grouping here will give me uh, the, 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 the group 
x, y. So I can simply come and take all these three expressions here and put them as f equal to x, z plus y, z plus x, y. These are the three groupings that we got from this one. So by taking a look at the Cranot maps, I was able to determine the dependencies uh, from by just by inspecting this one here, by inspecting the table. Uh, one thing to notice, I, I'm allowed to use every cell more than one time. And this is equivalent to simply writing that expression, which is x, y, z, writing it three times in my logical expression. But this does not really change the result. Because as we agreed, I can simply write the same expression x, y, z plus x, y, z plus x, y, z a hundred times, it doesn't matter because this does not change the value of the total logical expression because x plus x is equal to x. So this is really the essence of the Cranot maps. Create it, allow the variables, group the variables in groups of one, two, or four. Create this map here where one row will change two or one variable changes, one column, two or one variable changes. Take a look, inspect your map, try to see dependencies. Here I can tell that x does not depend, x does not change here. So y, z, when y is one, z is one, I get an, I got a one. Then this term here, the term corresponding to this group is y, z. Here I could see that as long as x is one and z is one, y is irrelevant. So this term here is x, z. This term here, you can see when x is 1 and y is 1, z is irrelevant. Then this term is x, y, and so on. So I was able to write this more concise expression by the inspection of the Cranot map. Okay, how do we implement this expression? Well, this is a sum of products. Very simple. Uh, the implementation, as we, as we said earlier, it's going to be um, an AND gate. So this one here will be x, z. The other one here will be um, y, z. The third one will be here x, y. These are our three variables. And then these ones, we can, of course, pass them to, uh, to three input OR gates. Or I can simply pass them to two level uh, OR gates like that. So this will implement for me my, uh, my logic function as sum of products and using only two input gates. So this is really a sum of product here as shown. And followed by OR gates. Okay, some rules to remember when using the Cranot map. First, we are trying to lump together uh, the, the 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 values that give us ones. So this one here is wrong. I I this one here is not really correct. I shouldn't be allowing that. This is one. This one is not correct. Okay, so I'm putting it there to remind is not correct. I I'm not looking to lump to group together zero and one. I'm looking for the output that creates one. So the other one here, this one, this one is right. Why? Because I could see here, regardless of y, regardless of y, the output is always one. So this, uh, sorry, regardless of x, x changes, sorry, from zero to one here. You can see x here is zero, x here is one, but y is always one. So as long as y is one, the output is one. So this term here is simply y, okay? We don't group uh, terms diagonally. Why? Because when you group terms diagonally, you are allowing more than one variable to change. Okay? And this is not permitted. We cannot, you cannot find a concise expression for something like this. While here, this is fine. We are, we are combining this for this one here. We are combining them in groups of two. So this one here, you can see as long as y is 1, you are getting 1. As long as x is 1, you are getting 1. So this term here will give us x. This one here will give us y. So the, uh, the, this, this Cranot map is fine, this way of forming it is fine, while this one here is wrong. Okay, I'm showing it, I'm putting it to show you that this you should not be doing that. We don't do grouping diagonally. Grouping has to be done along the rows and the, along the columns. Okay, we don't also group uh, groups of three. Uh, because a group of three will not give you a logical expression. Here, what can I derive from that? Uh, I could see here that uh, y is changing and z is changing. What? So what did I gain out of this one? This is not allowed. I cannot do something like this. I can group. I can do grouping of four. So the groups can be one, two, or four, um, or more, of course. Powers of two. Here you can see, if I group these four together, I have here y and z in one in in uh, in these columns, and I have x in these rows. You can see when I take a look here, I have 1, 1, 1, 1. So as long as x is logic 0, the output is 1 regardless of y and z. So the term corresponding to this group here is simply x bar. 
Uh, so a grouping of three it does not work and I shouldn't be using them. So this one is not, is not correct while this one is right. Any groupings of power of two is fine. Let's take a look at this one here. This one here, uh, this grouping is okay, but the problem is it will not result in the minimum number of gates. The, the more correct one is simply to say, okay, I could see here, I'm getting a logical one output, logical one output, logical one, a logical one. So the, the minimum number of groups that have been obtained by doing that, by combining these together, and by combining these four together. This would have been the minimum one, and this is, this is shown here. It's shown here. So for the first term, I could see as long as x is logic 0, the output is 1, regardless of y and z. So this term here is simply x bar. For this, these four here, I could see um, that as long as y is 1, y is 1, regardless of x or z, the output is 1. So this term here, these four here will give me y. So this one here will give me a logical term y. This one here will give me a logical term x bar. So if I want to write this one in a compact form, here f will be equal to x bar plus y. And they don't, there is no problem of them intersecting in one or two uh, components. And as I said, this simply means you are using, you are repeating the same components in your logical expression, which is 100% which is okay in logical algebra. Okay, so this uh, this Crano map here shows you something very important. It's called wrapping. I can wrap. I can combine groups. Do some sort of wrapping. You can see here. I'm I'm doing. I'm this. This is half of the group. This is another half of the group. Remember here that in going from here back again, you are only changing one variable, and this variable here is y. Z does not. Z here is zero. Y here is one. In going from here to here, z is zero, and y becomes zero. So this is telling you. As long as y, as long as, uh, as long as z is 0, you are getting 1 regardless of x or y. This what this symbol is telling you. So the logical expression that comes out from this one is simply f is equal to z bar. Of course, I have another term here, which is coming from this one. So this is telling me as long as x is logic 0, regardless of y and z, I will still get 1. So the second term that I have here in this one is simply x bar. Okay, so these are all rules we have to observe when we are doing uh, our Carano maps, and we get these Carano maps from the truth table. So these are the summary of the rules. We don't we don't include the zeros in our groups. We do only combining or grouping along the horizontal and vertical lines along the rows and columns. We, but we combine groups of only powers of two, one cell, two cells, or four cells, or eight cells. Uh, groups can be as large as possible, okay? Um, everyone in the map must be within a group. We can do overlapping. Groups can overlap together. Wrapping around the table is okay. Uh, we should try to obtain the smallest number of groups, because the smallest number of groups will result in the most efficient implementation in terms of gates. Okay, now we have um, a problem we'd like to, uh, to solve here using Crano maps. Um, uh, simplify the Boolean algebra, uh, Boolean function f equal to w bar z plus xz plus x bar y plus w x bar z. So this one here is a, is a Boolean uh, function. It's a logical function of four variables. Uh, of course, the brute force expression here, we will have to use um, three, three, and, three input and gates here. And uh, we try to or all these together. Maybe there is a better way of implementing them. So what we do, we build the. We can of course start by building the truth table, and then you could put the truth table into a Crano map, or you can start with the Crano map directly and fill all the entries in the Crano map. For this one, I will combine them two and two. I have four variables, so I will combine them into two and two. So let's take a look at how we build this Crano map. So as you can see here, I combined wx together and I combined yz together. So wx will change 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. You can see going from here to here, from here to here, I'm allowing only one variable to change. And the same thing for yz. I go from 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1, 0. I'm showing you only here the, one, the entries with 1. Uh, if, of course, you should try to verify this for yourself, that indeed the logic function will create for you 1. For example, let's take one of them. Um, uh, for maybe, maybe this one, w bar z. So when w is 0 and z is 1, you always get 1. 
So W is 0 here and here, and Z is 1 here and here. So for these four, for these, uh, four uh, entries, you're going to get 1, and so on. You'd see that each one of these expressions, each one of these terms, uh, contributed some of these cells. Now, this is how it looks like. I will start now by trying to combine them to, to, together. Uh, there are many possible ways of, co of combination. I can combine, of course, this group together. Okay, this is a very fine group. This is simply saying, as long as Z is 1, regardless of W, X, and regardless of Y, I'm getting 1. So this, this whole 4 will give me Z. It's, it's wonderful because, you see, I'm able to, 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 to remove uh, lots of the dependencies here. Now, of course, I can combine these two together. I can combine these two together, but this is not the most efficient. Maybe if I try to combine these four together, I can see this wrapping. I take, I take one half here, and I take one half here. Okay? So here and here, what characterizes these four cells? What characterizes them is that y is 1, and x is 0, here and here. Here and here, x is 0, and he, in, this, in this column and this column, y is 1. So combining these two and these, these two will give us x bar, y, x bar y. So now let's take a look at this in the next slide. So as I said um, in the previous slide, we have only two groups. The first group contained eight, eight ones, and this one will give us a z as shown here. The second group, which I obtained it through wrapping, gave us x bar, x bar y. Now, in Bilimia, you can see this now very simple, much simpler than the one we started with, and it required really um, a two, two gates plus the inverter here. So this one here will give us x bar y, while this one here will give us z, and then we order them. So only using two gates plus an inverter, we'll be able to simplify our expression. So this example can show you that very complicated logical expressions can be simplified by using the Carnot maps. And Carnot maps, as, as we said, we can do them uh, visually for variables, small numbers, up to six variables. After that, we have to use uh, more advanced algorithms that may not be suitable for, uh, for, um, for hand calculations.